boys and girls, it's Mrs. Kemp here again. Yesterday we started talking about fictional narratives and how they are a lot like personal narratives. You have to answer a lot of the same questions and you have to sequence your story with a beginning, middle, and end. But the part that's different about them is that they are not real. They are fiction. They are things that have not actually happened. So when we start writing fictional narratives, we want to use what's called an introduction. So that's the first part of your story that you are writing. And it says in narrative writing, introductions are very important. They will introduce the story to your reader and hook them or interest them. So when you are writing, you want the person who's reading your writing to be interested so that they keep reading. You want them to enjoy your story. So you want to start out with something that is very interesting. Your introduction is at the very, very beginning of your story before you explain the events, before you, even before you start talking about the what happens at the beginning. You want something else a little bit before that to kind of introduce everything to the person who is reading it. So there are a few ways on here that, that it's suggesting that we begin stories. And one of them is dialogue. That is just a fancy word for saying that someone is talking. So uh, it could be someone yelling. It could be someone just regular talking. Any sort of someone saying something to someone else. And again, it doesn't have to be people. It could be animals or anything else because this is fiction and you can be as creative as you want to. Another strong way to begin is by asking a question. Because when you ask a question first, a lot of the times the person who's reading is kind of like, huh, I wonder where this is going to go. I wonder what's going to happen here. So that's a good way to get the reader hooked or interested. Another way is describing something in detail. So that means, you you know, you use, losing a using a lot of adjectives and describing words to talk about something that will make the reader want to keep reading. Um, another one is giving a fact. And the last one is using what's called an onomatopoeia. An onomatopoeia. Yeah. Sometimes that word's hard to say because it's so long. Um, sometimes even I mess it up. And that is a big fancy word. Um, just basically using a sound effect or some other like crash or bang or pop, something like that that the reader is going to hear that and be like, huh, I wonder what made that sound or I wonder why that happened. Um, ways that we don't want you to begin are one time or once because so many stories begin that way, um, and, you know, it, it's a little more exciting to start your story in a different way. So we're going to try our hardest not to start with one time or once. What you are going to do today on Seesaw is you are going to have some pictures of some different things, and you are just going to write an introduction if you were going to write a story about what happened in that picture. So you don't have to write a whole story. You're just writing like one sentence that could introduce a story, could be the very, very beginning of a story about that picture. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. I have two different pictures here, and I'm going to pretend like I am writing a story about this man tripping and, well, slipping, I guess, I'm falling down, and then I'm going to do another one about this dragon with fire coming out of its mouth. So these are two very different types of fictional narratives. The man slipping and falling is a realistic fiction. It, it's something that could happen and probably has happened to you at some point. I'm sure you have all slipped and fallen at one point or another. The dragon, the fire-breathing dragon over here, is a make-believe fictional story. It's something that does not exist. So you're not going to walk outside one day and see a dragon outside. That's just not going to happen. 
So these are very, very different from each other, but they're still both fictional narratives. They're the two different kinds. So we're going to start with the man that fell. Uh, uh, and I am going to try to pick one of these ways to begin my story. And I think that I'm either going to use dialogue, which is talking to somebody, or asking a question. And I actually might make it be somebody asking a question to someone else. I think that's what I'm going to do. So let me see if I can write here. I'm going to have my first sentence be, did you ever clean up that big spill? Asked Samantha. So I am using dialogue and it's in the form of a question. So I kind of almost used two in one here. That's going to be the beginning of my story. Did you ever clean up that big spill? Asked Samantha. And just by my picture, we can figure out that nobody ever cleaned up that spill because the man slipped on it. But I don't need to write anything else right now. We're just practicing making introductions. So that's all I'm going to write for that one. If I was going to continue my story, I could keep going about how maybe they forgot to clean up the spill and then look what happened. This man tripped and fell. I could go into all those details, but I'm not doing that right now because we're just focused on the introduction. Okay, so that one I used dialogue and um, if you notice here, we ta we've talked about our quotation marks a little bit in foundations. Quotation marks just go around what someone in a story said. So Samantha asked a question. She said, did you clean up that big spill? So that's why it has those marks around it. All right, next one is a dragon. And one of my choices on here is describing something in detail. And I think I'm going to do that for, for this one because um, I think I can describe, especially since I see this dragon, I think I can describe it really well with lots of details. So I'm gonna pretend that someone woke up from sleeping and saw this dragon right in front of them. So. I opened my eyes in the morning and saw a gigantic purple dragon right next to me. It had dark purple spots and a bright orange belly. It had humongous orange wings and blue spikes going down its back. Oops, I didn't spell orange right. Out of room, so I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Worst of all, it had a big flame of fire coming out of its mouth. So this one, I used a description to start this story. So this one, oops, I still don't have orange spelled right. There we go. Uh, this one, I used a description to start it. So when you're using a description or describing something in detail, that's probably going to take a few sentences to do. So this one is definitely a longer choice, but that's okay. Um, 
I'm going to read it one more time. I opened my eyes in the morning and saw a giant purple dragon right next to me. It had dark purple spots and a bright orange belly. It had humongous orange wings and blue spikes going down its back. Worst of all, it had a big flame of fire coming out of its mouth. So I, I kind of like set my story up. I'm describing what the person is seeing as soon as they open their eyes when they wake up in the morning. And then the story can kind of start. They can say like what they did about it, where they went, uh, what the dragon did. Did they run away? Was the dragon nice? Did it talk? They can add all that stuff in later. This is just setting up the story. And this one is also, it's just in a different way. This one is with a question and with um, someone talking. So when you go on to Seesaw, you are going to have a choice. I think there's about seven or eight pictures that you can choose from, and you have to choose four, and you are going to write an introduction. You're going to pretend like you were going to write a narrative about that picture and just write your introduction for each picture. So go ahead and do that, and I can't wait to listen to all of your fabulous ideas.